The Black Panthers are forming a rainbow coalition of oppressed brothers and sisters of every color. Neutralize him by any means necessary. If you popped into a typical American classroom during Black History Month, you might think that the civil rights movement is made up of just a handful of people. Martin Luther King Jr., of course. Rosa Parks is there too. John Lewis in Selma, and maybe a brief mention of Malcolm X. The deputy chairman of the state of Illinois, Black Panther Party, Fred Hampton. You probably didn't learn much about Fred Hampton a Chicagoan with Southern roots who was building a coalition made up of Black Chicagoans, white Southerners from Appalachia, Latino immigrants, and even Chicago street gangs, up until the point he was killed by police in 1969. Some argue that's why he was killed. This is the story of how a young Black leader united a city of activists and the government's efforts to unravel it. Even though we had plenty of color photography at the time, we tend to look at the civil rights movement in black and white photos and mostly in the South. We rarely talk about how the movement inspired groups around the country. But the national movement was really a series of loosely connected local movements all across the country. Groups like the SCLC, the NAACP, and the Black Panther Party offered national support, messaging, and resources for homegrown movements. We can't move without you. We can't move. We can't move without you. Hampton grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. After college, Hampton became an organizer for the NAACP in the Chicago suburbs. He helped residents understand their rights in the face of brutality and gain access to social and educational resources. Because if they don't have an education, then they know where, you dig what I'm saying? They know where, because they don't even know why they're doing what they're doing. The Black Panther Party, founded in Oakland by Bobby Seale and Huey P. Newton, had begun developing chapters around the country in 1968 just a few months after Martin Luther King was assassinated in Memphis. Following the passage of the Voting Rights Act of 1965, King had turned for a national movement, a poor people's campaign to unite the working class of all backgrounds in a push for better wages, healthcare access, housing, and more. Chicago was one of his prime organizing targets. It was the second largest city in the country and home to violent segregation. Hampton and the Black Panthers picked up the torch from King. Now we say all power to all people. We say white power to white people. Brown power to brown people. Yellow power to yellow people. Black power to black people. X power to booze that we left out. We say Panther Power is the Vanguard Party. When you do it. A captivating speaker, he convinced Chicago gangs to form a non aggression pact. He even reached out to Latino groups like the Young Lords to find common cause. And shockingly, he found unity with a group of neo Confederates. What we have to do now is pull ourselves together into a functioning group of people who can go out and rebel against them. The Young Patriots were basically the hillbilly version of the Black Panthers. When Hampton's family moved north during the Great Migration, thousands of poor whites were also flocking to northern cities for work. They didn't face the same racial discrimination as Black migrants, but they did confront extreme poverty and regional prejudice. They used the Confederate tool to recruit Southern expats, but then joined them in anti-racist mission with the Black Panthers and the Young Lord. Hampton brought together the Rainbow Coalition, uniting each of these groups in a campaign again to address poverty and housing, health access, corruption, and police brutality. Now, if you're charismatic enough to get folks waving the Confederate flag to march for civil rights, 
People are going to pay attention to you. Sometimes the wrong people. Throughout most of the civil rights movement, the FBI conducted counterintelligence programs against its leaders and organizations, also known as COINTELPRO. Today, access to FBI files show major efforts against King, Malcolm X, and the Black Panthers. J. Edgar Hoover was obsessed with breaking up any collective movement for Black rights. As Hampton rose in the ranks of the Black Panthers, and especially as he began to unite various groups in Chicago, he also became a target. And why they want to get rid of me because I'm saying something that might wake up some other exploited people and some other oppressed people, and if all these people ever get together, then these pigs that are exploiting us, we'll be able to run them into the league. That's why they want to get rid of us. The FBI set up undercover operations, disseminated misinformation, so distrust and encouraged violence amongst the Panthers and other members of the Rainbow Coalition. Their operatives published anti-white cartoons under the name of the Black Panthers to anger the young patriots. Violence spread throughout the city. In late 1969, Hampton flew to California for a national meeting of the Black Panthers. While he was gone, two police officers were killed during a shootout between the Panthers and the Chicago PD. After he returned home, the FBI encouraged a police raid on the apartment he shared with his fiance, who was pregnant with their child. Like the masses, I was in awe when I first laid eyes on all the things you are. An undercover agent drugged Hampton so he wouldn't wake up. And on December 4th, Chicago police broke into Hampton's apartment. Some eyewitnesses claim they heard police verbally identify Hampton before shooting him in the head at point blank range. Four other people in the house were shot beaten and dragged into the streets. Police claim the next day they fired in self-defense. The immediate violent criminal reaction of the occupants in shooting at announced police officers emphasizes the extreme viciousness of the Black Panther Party. But a later investigation found that police fired somewhere between 90 and 99 shots. The Panthers fired only once and that was from a fallen shotgun. Hampton's death has been called a murder and an assassination. Years later, Cook County reached a settlement with the survivors and Hampton's mother. The Rainbow Coalition lived on in various forms, but the FBI had succeeded in creating discord and distrust. The civil rights movement lost another powerful voice. Fred Hampton was only 21 years old. But you should know about the coalition that Chairman Fred Hampton built and the hundreds of other stories that make up the civil rights movement. Because it's not just black history, it's American history. You can murder a liberator, but you can't murder liberation. You can murder a revolutionary, but you can't murder a revolution. And you can murder a freedom fighter, but you can't murder freedom. But you can jail a revolutionary, but you can't jail a revolution. Bang. You might run a liberator like Harris Cleave out the country, but you can't run liberation out the country. You might murder a freedom fighter like Bobby Hutton, but you can't murder freedom fighting. And if you do, you come up with answers that don't answer explanations that don't explain. You come up with conclusions that don't conclude. We say all power to all people. We say, all people. We say white power to white people. White power. Brown power to brown people. Yellow power to yellow people. Yellow power to black people. Black power to black people. 